Welcome to Professional Prepper. Let's talk about ham radio. What it is, what it isn't, and how it can help you be more prepared. So ham radio basically gives you a license to operate on specific frequencies inside the radio frequency spectrum. Uh, now, it isn't something that you can basically pick up by a ham radio and start talking immediately and talk around the globe. And it's going to take a little bit of training, just like everything else, to become proficient uh, and get good at it and be able to utilize it and be able to trust it as a reliable mechanism to utilize during an emergency situation. Now, short range communications, uh, you can buy these little walkie talkies, basically. They call them handy talkies in ham radio, but you can buy these for anywhere around $35. But to get about two of them, it costs you around $50 as an entry point. Uh, mid range, you can basically set up a, an antenna inside your house, get a little bit elevated, uh, and talk, you know, a, a little bit farther for about a hundred bucks. But you can also buy some high end gear for about $350. That really gives you a good, strong ability to operate short range. So what do I mean short range? Well, this center gray circle here is basically what range you can expect with a walkie-talkie in my city, about, I don't know, 500 yards to either side of me. Um, and you know that's with buildings in the way. You know If I'm in an elevated position, there's no trees or buildings or anything like that, I can look a little farther. But basically in my city, I, this is what I got. Once I bumped into a ham radio, I can bump out about a mile and a half, two miles in any direction that I wish, um, as long as I can, you know, it, I'm not inside of a metal box or inside a house. I'm outside. It works pretty well. So, um, you know, mid range communications is kind of where that capability shines. And this is still utilizing the technician license, uh, the very basic entry level licensing, very easy to get. For about a low point of about $250, you can buy some equipment that you can put in your house and really um, get an, an antenna that goes up pretty high. Uh, you can basically outfit your vehicles uh, you know, for a little bit more and really be able to operate, whether it be convoys or outside of your house, um, for a pretty good distance um, and still be able to communicate. But where it really shines is when you start using repeater towers. And now repeater towers are basically uh, like cell phone towers. And what those do is it basically takes in your signal and pumps it out um, so that broadcasts it across a much larger area uh, and basically gives you backup communications with almost cell phone capability. Um, and it allows you to have that um, anytime you want. So here in Yuma, Arizona, um, when I'm talking outside of my house um, with my handheld um, walkie-talkie or, I'm sorry, the, the base station that I have with an antenna on top of my house, I'm limited by a lot of the terrain that's around. So I got mountains over to the east, which kind of block my signal. I got low areas that drop down below and I can't kind of get to them. But really, you know, down to the south is kind of where my range, overall range is kind of limited out um, with the power I'm pushing out at about 50 watts. Um, about 15 miles is kind of the maximum range I can get um, with decent line of sight. So, um, but however, once I pump that up and utilize these repeater towers, I basically got cell phone connection with every single person within my city and can talk to whoever I want. And now once I use the large repeater tower that's on top of a large mountain um, within range, I can blast my signal out to anybody in the immediate area and now here's a cool part is that you can bounce your or take your signal and transport across repeater towers and get to other major urban areas that are close by so here's phoenix arizona complete massive network of repeater towers i can talk to anyone in the area basically as a backup cell phone um, but my signal basically comes from yuma arizona um, hits the repeater tower, goes to the internet, and gets transmitted across um, state lines, county lines, into other major cities, and I got a very effective communications platform. Now here's my local network that I use all the time, and so here in Yuma, Arizona, um, I typically use the repeater towers to bounce my signal all the way down to the Mexico border. Um, all I communicate up with people in Phoenix, Arizona, and then I also communicate with people over in San Diego. Now this is the, the major cities on either side of I-8 and this is the main east-west corridor that travels across the United States here in the southwest. 
uh, and it gives me great awareness on kind of what's going on. A lot of times a road can close, but if there is an emergency uh, in either location, I can become aware of that. Even if the different uh, networks are down, if the internet goes down, if the electricity goes down, I still have the ability to figure out what's going on because a lot of these repeater towers have backup power. And the you know, sheriff's department and different police departments utilize these same towers and they're powered by the same you know, backup systems. So you have a lot of resilience in this capability. Now let's talk long range communications. With my simple HF radio with no internet or things linking me up together, I can talk to people in you know, northern or central Washington. Uh, I can talk to people in Utah, over in Colorado, Northern California, Oregon, and that's on a, you know, if conditions are good, but no matter what, reliably, I can talk to people in Phoenix, Tucson, San Diego, uh, every single day with my 20 watt radio, um, even if the conditions aren't very good. Um, and so that's a, an awesome way that even if internet is down, if the power's out, cell phone networks are down, everything's gone to heck, you know, I can still talk to people and understand what's going on locally. But if I were to get some higher power equipment, I could easily bounce my signals much farther, um, reach the central part of the United States. I could even reach out to, um, you know, over into Asia. Uh, and so there are some awesome capabilities here that you can utilize without utilizing the internet. Uh, and so this type of equipment on the low end, you can uh, achieve this with about $300. Uh, Mid-range was kind of a sweet spot around $1,500. And definitely on the high end, and it goes much higher than this, but around ten grand, people can put up their, erect their own towers, get directional antennas, and boom out their signal using 1,000 watts of power uh, and get some amazing range and capabilities out of it. But even if you just have a technician license, uh, you can get something called a DMR radio, which is digital mobile radio. So DMR and also this thing down here called Windlink, those basically utilize the internet. And so you just get your signal to a repeater tower that then puts that signal and information into the internet. And you can pop out and give text messages, phone calls, or um, email messages to anyone in anywhere across the globe using the power of the internet. So just what I talked about at the beginning was the ability to transmit your signal and bounce off the ionosphere and shoot it back down to earth. And this is what kind of the, the single bounce will get you about, um, you know, anywhere from 250 miles reliably day to day, almost no issues. Um, but then much further, um, when you start getting uh, multiple bounces or hops, um, it with your different radios and transmissions but dmr is one of the most exciting and growing areas of uh, ham radio and when you you can set up groups or networks of people that you have linked together and you can talk um just with yourselves and with your buddies or family members and you guys are the only ones that are going to be getting that signal because once it goes into the radio tower and goes into this network um, it's only going to broadcast that out to people that are in your area um, that have those radios. So it's a pretty cool um, ability to talk um, privately with you and your friends and family. Um, but if someone really wants to bug in on you, yeah, they can listen. But basically, it's an awesome way to stay connected with you and your friends um, just with text messages, emails, um, and voice. Um, awesome. DMR is exploding in popularity. The next uh, thing that's majorly used during emergency situations is Windlink. So during a, a time of need, those little walkie-talkies, those little handhelds, they may not be able to get a signal to a radio tower. So you may have to use HF radio to, bounce, to get your signal to a, a repeater tower that may be in a city next to you, or you know, about 250 miles away that wasn't affected by the disaster, uh, even 500 miles, 1,000 miles. And once that repeater tower gets your digital signal, it can then send that off to other. It puts it in a storage area or server, and then it can reach other people in a network. So you can use your laptop, you can use your cell phone, and it basically creates a digital signal that goes through your radio to a repeater tower into the internet and comes out to whoever needs it. 
And so this is what is primarily used during disasters in order to relay um, important critical information to other users. So now uh, we've got done talking about what kind of ham radio is, what it isn't. I'm going to show you some of my gear. Here are the ham radios that I use, and so this is just your simple basic UV5R, about as cheap as you can get, but does have the extended battery pack on there, uh, it has the extended antenna on there as well, and you know here's another option as well as a Bayo thing. And so this one is about, you know, you can get it for 35 bucks with a couple accessories. You can get about a two pack of them for about 50 bucks. Um, and they're great options for your short range communications uh, in and around the house with a range of about a mile and a half um, line of sight and uh, in an urban area. Um, but also these can queue up on the repeater towers. And so they do an awesome job. And in an emergency, they can also connect up to your basic handheld walkie talkies, but that's illegal unless it's an emergency situation. But for mid range option around my house, I have this mobile radio. And so this mobile radio connects up to a power supply right here. And so I can turn this power supply on and then I can start up my mobile radio. And so this guy busts out, you know, pumps out 50 Watts. I uh, got a speaker attached to it and this can connect, connect to these. All right, so basically transmitting from Utah. So you can, you can see that this basically gives me those mid-range communications capabilities um, at a very affordable price. And then this radio is the exact same one that I have in my truck. So here you go, we're on my truck. And so that's a magnetic antenna right there. And so that can handle the, all the ham radio frequencies, but connects down into my vehicle and I can take that sucker on and off whether I want, want it on or if I had some branches or anything like that that I have to clear. But there's that same mobile radio, 50 watts, and it's connected up to the, the battery. But of course, this guy um, operates on all of the frequencies that I need. Um, and it's great for convoys, you know, when you're cruising out through the desert, four-wheeling, you want to talk to your buddies. But check this out. So this is a walkie-talkie and it will cue this sucker up. So basically you're able to you're able to listen to this and I got a little speaker here in the front uh, to help things out as well as so I can hear it so I can basically shut this guy and just cruise around and be good to go. So uh, but anyways, it does have a nice little hand mic that I nice little hand mic that I oh, see that's one of the repeater towers queuing off. but um, basically, this is a little hand mic that I can use, um, and if I need to change channels real quick or anything like that, I can do that on the fly, but basically just got queued in, and I can talk on this guy. So anyways, pretty useful tool. And this is great for convoys, and also it's because it's 50 watts. It gets a little bit of that mid-range, and it can also talk on those repeater towers, like I said before, and I can get great range out of it. So here's the great long range option, and now this is the Zygu G90 radio. And of course, this guy right here is uh, relatively inexpensive, pushes out 20 watts, um, not super powerful, but you can then run through this in, through an amplifier to get much greater range. And so I've gotten all the way up to Washington State from Yuma, Arizona, um, and then out to Texas um, going east, and then all the way out to uh, you know Sacramento, um, California, all the way up to San Francisco. So um, basically, Here's some, some guys chatting. So this is has a great display on it. It has this waterfall, which basically lets you locate which frequencies are being utilized. It just lets you, you know, see what you're what you're trying to pick up, and it makes it really easy and intuitive for someone that uh, is inexperienced. So, uh, once again, that's just running right off of my power supply. I got it hooked up right here just to show you guys a little bit better. But basically it comes with this hand mic right here and even with that simple wire antenna that I'll show you up on top of my house this guy can stretch really far 
I want to show you guys my antenna setup, and so the one on the left is just a TV reception antenna, but the one there in the middle, that one is my UHF and VHF antenna that I use that's connected to that mobile radio in my garage. And that basically gives me the signal that goes all around the house locally uh, and can also connect me to the repeaters. And the one on the right there is an N-fed half-wave antenna, and so it connects up to that guy right there. And then the line, basically the wire goes all the way across and matches up right there on top. And so what that does is that blasts out my signal and it's resonant on 40 meters, 20 meters, 10 meters, and so forth. And it is an awesome antenna, it's been working great. Gets me out to Seattle, Washington, San Diego, Phoenix, Tucson, Reno, Nevada, wherever I need to be broadcasting at. So um, anyways, if you have any questions, go ahead and post them down in the comments section below. And then if you want a link to where know where to buy any of the items I have um, shown you guys today, I'll go ahead and put those in the video description. But as always, guys, hit like, subscribe. Appreciate it. Take care.